What are you complaining about now? You got exactly what you wanted. So continues one of the most infuriating and frustrating experiences in my entire life loving anything. What's up, my know-it-alls? Okay, so the new episode of The Acolyte dropped. I purposely waited overnight so I could sleep on it. Let me start by saying this. The moment that it cut to the director's name, Mrs. Know-it-all's first words were, this is dumb. This should have been part of episode three. I don't necessarily agree exactly with that sentiment, but I understand where she's coming from. I spent last week explaining uh, a lot of what is good storytelling, walking through the act, multi-act structure, explaining why it's a little frustrating, at the very least why I feel like the series is frustrating. Last week's episode, by the way, last week's episode gets a five out of 10. I'm gonna give you that right up front right now. Five out of 10 uh, for the Nordal Index because this week's episode, surprisingly, was not the second half of last week's episode. No, no, no. And everyone's gonna be like, but it was 43 minutes long, but it was 43 minutes long. Okay, no, I paused it right when the credit lady, when the, the director showed up. It was 37 minutes and changed long. Minus the two minutes before, right up until the actual episode began because you have that opening and the intro and the whole bit. So it was 35 minutes. This entire episode was 35 minutes. Could it have been tacked on to the back end of last week's episode? Sure, would it have made sense? Probably not. Though it actually... Probably it could have made sense, especially because Saul specifically says, I've had 16 years to think about what I would say to you if I ever got the opportunity. Okay. All right. So you could have, I, I'm beginning to feel like there's a world in which I have to, I'm going to have to do some form of super edit to see if I can make this all make more sense. Because at the end of the, uh, truthfully, what's your, okay. Let me start with what I liked, because that's going to be easier to do. The episode was fine. The episode gave us context. It gave us information. It answered all kinds of questions. Yay. Seriously. Yay. No problem. Wonderful. 10 out of 10 in terms of giving all of the stuff and the people want. That is in no way, shape, or form the Nodal Index for this episode. You should know that by now. Okay. <sighs> I like the writing. I liked the writing itself. Of the, I liked what we saw because it gave us context. The issue you have is all of the, it's all undercut. I feel like it's too little too late. I feel like you gave us tons of information. You confirmed all kinds of things. I see now why they've been like, well, wait to the end, wait to the end, wait to the end. The problem is this information should not have come at the end. Again, I'm talking as a storyteller. I'm not even talking as a fan. Okay, I'm not even talking about any other nonsense. Now, I do think there's a universe in which you can edit this together correctly. Because the story's not being told correctly. How dare you? Who do you think you are? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's fine. Thanks. Just continue down the comments. You'll be fine. The issue that you have is this entire thing feels like this is the reveal toward the end. First off, this does none of the things the penultimate episode is supposed to do. If you, any TV show throughout history that you watch that's worth a damn, the penultimate episode has two jobs. Either A, it's setting up the climax and the very beginning of the final episode will be your climax that will then take you down or take you downhill in terms of storytelling over the arc, okay? Or B, its second job potentially, is to be the climax itself so that the entire final episode is resolution, resolving some things, maybe finishing off the final events or the final moments of whatever the, the climax was. This doesn't do any of that. This is the flashback episode that I said was, was supposed to come most likely after the fight started way back in episode four. 
Remember when everyone lit their lightsabers and every, and it looks like he was going to fight and dude shows up and he throws her aside. Remember that whole thing? So, and I thought then we were going to get this because at least even though the beginning of the story felt way bloated and overly been overly what it shouldn't have been, because again, forget, forget canon, forget all that nonsense, forget all the stuff that normally people argue about, but I'm just going strictly on story structure here. And that's the rules that have been broken. There were people last week on TikTok who didn't seem to understand what I was talking about. What rules have been broken? The rules of story and structure, the rules of narrative, how you actually put a, or orchestrate and put a story together. Because of how the beginning was built, the only logical place, because I knew this episode was coming, because this info, info dealt from the other side had to be coming. Because believe it or not, Leslie Headland is no kind of is no kind of like narrative genius. This all makes sense now. This information should have been moved earlier in the season. Why? Because to put it here, you leave people feeling like none of that was telegraphed. When you may every mystery seeds and sprinkles details throughout. The reason you've gotten the pushback from Star Wars fans, the re uh, and again, real pushback. I'm not talking about again, I'm, I'm not talking about as much as <laughs> as much as some viewers hate to hear me constantly say it. I'm not talking about the the lesbian witches thing. I'm not talking about the whatever, any of that stuff. None of that none of those none of those things are what I'm referring to. I'm strictly talking about the narrative beats and the story stuff that doesn't work in this. The only way you can tell this story is by having the other side. So when you don't give that information and you don't give any indication that information's coming, at least anytime soon, then what you're forced with is me as the viewer and the audience person, me as the reader, if this was a book, I sit here and I go, well, what the heck, man? This doesn't make, none of this is making sense. There is such a, you, when you see the mystery, when you see the story, you, you're you telling us, hey, this is the information you need, but then you imply there's more. You don't imply by not having it, because not having it is why you got the pushback. Because all of a sudden we're sitting here going, there's something missing. It's like tasting the soup and going, there's something missing from this. But then right before you serve it, now you're going to add those missing ingredients. It doesn't have time to cook. It doesn't have time for those flavors to blend in. In, a, in. in an ideal setting, in a perfect world, the very first time Saul said, right in that fight scene, when he goes, when we get back to the ship, I will tell you exactly what, what, what I should have told you or what I've been keeping from whatever. When he said that, that's why... That moment is why I assumed there was eventually going to be this very episode, an info dump. So what happens in the episode? The episode's exactly what I always thought it was going to be. This, this type of episode was going to be, though not where I thought it was going to be. I thought, oh yeah, we're going to get the other side of the situation. We have to understand the Jedi's context. One, you, you bump into, so, so in the context of things, you bump into several things. One, on the heels of la on the heels of numerous Jedi who aren't Jedi, i.e., the way Leslie Hetland just talked about in an interview that, you know, she didn't she wasn't because this was Jedi in the high high republic time. It's different than George Lucas's ideal. Fine. I am not even gonna enter that arena of argument. Fine. Now you have the likes of Jedi Torbin or Padawan Torbin. Padawan Torbin, who's the whiniest, complainiest none Padawan I've ever seen in my life. Nothing about him shouts, this kid should be a Padawan. Not a thing. Why on earth you would pick him? And the problem is, he's like this for the sake of plot, for plot and reasons. Because he's not like this because of any other reason. Because he doesn't, he doesn't fit into the Star Wars universe. He doesn't feel like uh, the kind of character we have ever established would be a Jedi. I don't understand how he ever came through the system whatsoever. I never can, I can't envision Torben ever having been one of those kids 
in a thing, learning from whoever, you know, Master Yoda with hair, I don't know, with, with nicely coiffed hair, I could care less. He doesn't fit, and the only reason he doesn't fit is because the writers need him to be this kind of character for this narrative to work. They're on this planet, and they've explained a lot of things. And again, all of this falls under stuff that I actually think is good, because I do. What you're hearing is frustration. Emotional damage. We open on them on the pl they're on the planet. The Jedi are on the planet. You get this really amazing moment where apparently Kelnaka is. I get to see a Wookiee with a metal detector, and by the way, it it is a metal detector. Like it's not even like a Star Wars affied metal detector. I look like this. This literally looks like a metal detector you could have bought from like Home Depot. Okay. They've added maybe two or three blinking lights, but overall, it literally looks like a metal detector you could find anywhere. The kind of metal detector your dad or your granddad back in the day used to use walking to the beach in Florida. Trust me. They're taking samples. It felt very Star Trek, funny enough. I'm like, huh, Jedi taking samples. Okay. All right. You find out it's a ham-fisted way of showing us they're trying to discover why this planet was dead uh, only a few however long ago and now it's alive. The only thing that can cause life to spontaneously cre be created is a virgence in the force. Virgence in the force. Why does that phrase sound so familiar to some people? Because a virgence in the force is what Anakin was called. I'm, I sense a virgence in the force. A virgence centered around a being, a person, okay? If you remember that from the prequels, Anakin was the virgence, the force, around a person, thus he was spontaneously created. All right? Effectively removing the Anakin argument, and that's fine. Now, they've expanded the definition of a, of a, of a, of a virgin. By the way, I'm not in the camp of people who are like, you're breaking canon, you're this and that. I'm not. I know that I said that in previous episodes because I didn't have context. By the way, this is the episode, this is the information that would have given that other stuff, context. So because you wanted to be clever and tell a story that I think you believe is somehow, look at us, we did, look at, ha ha ha, you got the pushback you got. So you deserve everything you got. Because I'm one of those people that says, if you're the storyteller, I'm gonna trust what you're telling me. So now with this new information, we have now expanded the definition of a virgence. Fine. This virgence was centered around a place. I'm sure we're later on somehow going to learn that in essence, the girls were, <clears throat> were, it was a part of being here on this planet. And they, however, the witches did what they did. They also name dropped the night sisters and those kinds of witches. And they called them a, a witch cult and a, a force cult rather. And it's, I, I, they have definitions of everything and I get it. And it all makes sense within the context of this episode, the second to last episode. That's why you hear what you hear from me. Because none of this fits together the way it should. It's a very unsatisfying puzzle. So uh, now that they know that this is the case, as they're searching, they, they have different sectors of the planet they're going to check out. And uh, Gary and Ma send, and Dara sends, uh, sends Saul to go check out uh, Jim Jong Ye. Yeah, or rather, should you go check out um, the another area? He goes near where the tree was, the the what whatnot, and that's where the girls were. He get basically we get to see everything from the previous flashback from the perspective of the Jedi, and you get to see that Saul was essentially there, eavesdropping everywhere. Then when we finally get, he comes back, he reports back, he tells them what's going on. They finally go. And they, this is when they go and they they investigate, they break in, which I didn't realize. See, in the first time, I thought they were on a planet that was populated and the ladies were just hiding there. And that the Jedi were there visiting and thus were, that's what I thought in the first one because you had no context. They didn't tell the story right. And that's whatever. YouTube critic tells Hollywood writer they didn't tell the story right. Fine. Again, the internet wants to be dismissive, whatever. As you go through the story, they, you get, again, you see these points. Then we get to the Torben thing. The moment when they were facing the, the sisters, Torben, uh, mother, Asaya, mother uh, Anasea goes into his head. So weak Padawan 
is sitting here because he's childish and he wants to go home. So she, he's so whiny. But Mr. You know it all, Luke was whiny too. Luke was whiny for many different reasons, okay? He was a kid who was thrown into a crazy situation. This is a Padawan who presumably has been taught to keep his chill. And he has none. Okay, none. And apparently these, these, these ladies have the ability to go into your heads. They're far more powerful than we assumed. That I'm okay with. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with things... Uh, I'm fine with new information giving me new context. What I'm not fine with is when you do it to the e at the end and it feels like a weird slap in the face. Like it feels like this was all held back for the sake of being able to rebut the fan ire and the anger that was put that was that you knew was going to come from the decisions you made storytelling wise all because you want to be clever at the end and suddenly go ha ha ha. Anyway, so you see, the the whole story in context is that from this whole perspective is that uh, I I thought there was going to be a little bit more, but essentially, yeah, no, they really are truthfully saying that she started the fire, and that is what caused a lot of this problem. Now, there's other things happening because apparently throughout you find out on the other side that um, that uh, her other mom was trying to egg her to get angry. It's almost like Anasea and her wife were both themselves opposites of the, the thought. Like obviously Anasea believed that they believe the way they believe, but I feel like her, her, her wife believed more that she was, that they were the dark. They should follow the angry side to, to, she was very angry all the time. So they were themselves light and dark. And then you get later on this revelation, could the force have split? Could they have been used to artificially uh, use the virgins to split a being in two? Now we find out potentially, and again, it's uh, whatever. You find out that the two sisters more than likely are were one person split in two. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm with you, I think, so far. And then you finally get to the culmination of things where you where uh, uh, Saul, you see, you got to see the big fight because they apparently because the sisters in order to defend themselves all took. I don't understand the 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 translocation thing because I've never known the force to be able to translocate you, but it whatever it's magic they call it they classify it as magic, so that means it, magic is a thing in Star Wars. That's always been. Um, which is really just another usage of the force. It's different in how it's interpreted, and that's fine. And so they somehow use magics to transport someplace else while all the sisters combine the power of many, remember? And they control Kelnaka. That's why we get the fight. It's another really cool looking fight. A lot of wire work. You get to see a Wookiee use a lightsaber and wreck both Torben and Saul. Hardcore. It took Carrion, it took Indara to show up. Carrion, I must say Carrion and Dara. It took Carrion Moss showing up uh, to to sort of help put him down because she had to exercise the thing. And somehow the implication based on what we saw is that what she did, because how the women were connected to him, killed them. I don't think it was killed on purpose. I think she disconnected them. Not She was trying to protect Kelnaka. She cut them off from him and somehow by cutting them off, left, she, uh, disconnected them. They were non-corporeally disconnected from their bodies. I'm trying to make sense of all the pieces here. And at the end of the day, uh, that's why they were all laying around, presumably dead. Meanwhile, Saul has to make a choice. I did see one person online who, who has conjectured that because Saul had no ability with the dark side, he wasn't able to help the other one. So he made the choice to help May rather than Osha. Um, and that's, and I guess he's guilty of that. And then we get to the very end of the whole thing and he wakes up and then the episode's over. Okay. So you get a standalone flashback episode yet again. And now we're back after the questions and things that were raised from last week. After the whole situation, after the physical representation of the seduction of the dark side, according to Leslie Hedlund, I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. Obviously, I'm literally here to the end, so I'm going to be here for next week. But it is exhausting. It has absolutely been exhausting watching this show. Um, we'll just see. We'll see what happens. 
storytelling beats aside, I enjoy the story they've told to a point. Uh, I'm debating whether or not this would be worth diving into when it's all finished and trying to assemble a better version as a movie. Um, I, I'm, it's plausible and doable. I just have to see if I'm really willing to commit that much time and effort to it. But yeah, there you go. Now you know. And if no one's got the battle, you're having to be known all yourself. What's an all index for this episode for me? On its face, it should be higher than it is. But I'm frustrated. As a fan, as an audience member, I am frustrated. This is not how you tell story well. And there are people who are just going to be like, this is great because they want to like stuff. And that's great. And I do. I do like stuff. And I enjoyed this. What I didn't enjoy is where it landed. And what I didn't enjoy is the frustration you put me through up to here. Therefore, I'm penalizing. This episode gets penalized for that in terms of where it lands in my thought process. I take things as they are and as they live within the season I'm seeing. So for instance, I'm not, I, I'm not going to judge, I, I won't judge Ahsoka or this by Ahsoka's measure. I won't judge this by Obi-Wan's measure. I will judge this by its own measure and within its own context, I'm going to give this a 7 out of 10. All right, guys, comment below. Let me know what you thought. I'm absolutely intrigued by where they're going with this because I feel like when you, this shows, my problem is this makes the rest of the issues I've had feel premeditated in a way that's frustrating. So I'm like, you knew clearly we were going to be frustrated because why would, because you can't possibly tell a story the way you've told it and expect it to make anything resembling sense and expect anyone to just accept it. We're better than that. Fans of Star Wars, you're better than that. So do better, seriously. I hope they stick the landing. I genuinely do. I'm going to be here for it. Hopefully you will be too. Uh, don't forget, guys, the playlist is right there. That's last week's episode, and you can always subscribe down there. All right, guys, we'll talk again real soon. Never forget, everyone loves a know-it-all.